Church of Christ. I'm Reverend Drew Terry. I'm the pastor here. And here we say, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are a beloved child of God, and we are deeply grateful that you join us this morning for worship. A special welcome to any visitors with us this morning. If you're in person with us, welcome. We are grateful to have you. Uh, there, there are little gift bags at the entryway where you got your bulletin. Hopefully you eventually got your bulletin. Sorry, we're a little behind this morning. <laughs> but there are little gift bags. Please do take one. It's got really good information about our church, about the United Church of Christ, our denomination, and probably most importantly, they've got little peppermints in it. So please take one of those bags. We'd love for you to have one. Also, following worship, everyone, everyone, everyone is welcome to join us in our fellowship hall for coffee and treats and just good conversation. It's a great way to get to know us. If you need help finding it, uh, we'll point you in the right direction. It's just on the building across the parking lot. We would be happy to show you if you, if you need a little help. Just ask one of our ushers to greet you in the front. I also want to give a special welcome to those online. We are grateful you've been able to join us this way this morning. We do pray that one day you'll be able to join us in person. Until then, we are blessed to have you. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how you're doing. We'd love to connect with you. You can go to orvalleyucc.org. You can send us an email. You can reach out to our Facebook page, Or Valley United Church of Christ, or reach us on Instagram as well at Or Valley United Church of Christ. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, for those in person, one last note, there is in those gift bags as well as in the seat bags in front of you, little yellow cards. And those little yellow cards, we invite you to share what information you feel comfortable sharing. Name, phone number, email address, and place them in our offering basket when our offering plate goes around. And we will use that information to connect with you. Give you a chance to learn more about who our church is, ask any questions, and also give you a chance to share more about who you are and where you are in life's journey. I do want to make a couple of announcements this morning. We do have a couple of announcements, community announcements. First and foremost, we have a lot of newer faces, and we're still getting to know each other once again after the pandemic. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's wearing a name tag. You can see in our announcement portion of our bulletin more information about name tag. Especially if you want a more permanent name tag, there's a way to order those. So thank you for wearing your name tag so we can get to know you a little bit better and you can know us a little bit better. Two weeks from today is the first Sunday in November and we will do our monthly mission project, which is supporting the Interfaith Community Services Food Bank. This is a food bank that distributes food throughout the Tucson area, including Oro Valley. And we bring non-perishable food items, canned tuna, beans, spaghetti. If you bring in peanut butter, we ask that you bring it. The ICS wants the regular size peanut butter, uh, spaghetti sauce. If you can bring a non-glass jar, that's a hard one. Uh, but those kind of things, we have a needs list on in our email. You can sign up for our weekly email. We do have a needs list where you can go to ICS website and you can find what they look for in non-perishable items. But we'll collect those over the next two weeks. You can drop them off in the front area of our sanctuary here right next to the front door. You can bring them into the office on Tuesdays. We do have new office hours Tuesdays from 10 to 1. You can drop off your non-perishable food items then as well and we'll make sure they get to ICS on that second first Sunday of the month. Those are the announcements I have made. I believe Georgine's got an announcement. Just a reminder that uh, Bring a Friend to Church Sunday is uh, the very first Sunday of November, November the 5th. And uh, its purpose is simply to share our worship experience with someone from our own personal circle, friends and relatives. Um, and if you don't have a guest, please attend because we are all part of the worship experience. Thank you, Georgine. And I did forget an announcement, probably the most important announcement. Uh, next week, uh, we are, will be celebrating Halloween in whatever way we want to celebrate Halloween. And we invite all of our young people who aren't 
aren't here this morning, that's okay, we know they're out there. Uh, but hopefully our young people show up in costumes. If you feel moved to wear a costume next week, please do. You are totally empowered. I've seen grown men dress as cats in church on Halloween. It's a lot of fun. And then also, if you want to, if you're not so much in the costume area, or you're in the costume and sort of posture, uh, we invite you to bring little candies that you can share with the little ones, because there's nothing like, as a parent, I know how much joy it is to sugar up somebody else's kid and help that kid go with that parent. So please, I invite you to go ahead and spoil my children. Uh, so hopefully next week you get to see lots of dinosaurs and masks and whatever else shows up. And I invite you to join in that spirit. And that will be for our fellowship time. Those being our announcements this morning, we like to begin worship acknowledging any birthdays or anniversaries that might be among us. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries to be celebrated this morning? Oh, Todd. Kathy and I celebrated our 33rd Aww. wedding anniversary. Yay! Wonderful. Todd and Kathy are celebrating 33 years. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. If there are no other birthdays or anniversaries, thanks for sharing and starting our, our worship off with joy. And so in that spirit, I invite us all to take a deep breath. And in the joy and the presence of the Holy Spirit, I invite you to stand as you are able and body your spirit and greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. And if you can, you can wave to those at home watching and say peace. <laughs> demonstrate your kingdom. May justice and peace be our hope. Let repair, restoration, and reconciliation be our aim. Make your presence among us known. Let us prepare to receive it. Amen. Amen. 
Please remain standing as you are able as we sing our opening hymn.
now enter into our time of prayer together, lifting up prayers of our community and our world. I want to lift up a couple of prayers for Jade, our church intern and spouse. Um, first of all, she's not able to be with us today. She's a little under the weather. Uh, nothing contagious, I promise. Uh, so just prayers for her quick healing. Uh, prayer of joy. Uh, she was named our church intern, who is getting college credit to go to the University of Arizona, uh, has been, she is in a program within the College of Education called the Learning Leadership and Literacy Program. She has been named the Graduating Senior of the Year oh, wow. in the Learning wow. Leadership wow. and Literacy Program. Wow. Uh, and on top of that, I continue prayers because she's also been nominated in the top five, way to hear her. To be named uh, Senior of the Year for the entire College of Education. Oh so gosh. prayers that that comes through, and uh, thank God for one good intern, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so so praise be to God for that. Uh, lift up prayers for uh, John and Karen, who last week lifted up prayers for John's son Glenn. Uh, they had to go to California. John and Karen have safely made it to California to be with Glenn. Glenn is suffering from very serious illness. And so we just pray for John and Karen and for Glenn especially and his family in this time. It's a very difficult time. Uh, I will say that Karen and John have been in touch with me. And, and there's, there's a hope and a peace in everything that's going on. So prayers that they continue be surrounded in God's love in this very difficult time. I also, going to our world, I continue to pray for the conflict in Israel and Palestine. First and foremost, we pray for the hostages who remain in captivity under Hamas. Uh, prayers that they are released immediately. Uh, prayers for all their families who have been living for weeks now in great, dist unimaginable distress. Prayers for peace and comfort upon them and all those who support them. And prayers for our own wisdom and insight and love, knowing that this is a war. Uh, knowing that they're, they're, you know, it's a difficult place to be. And we pray that justice come upon all those who need it. And that peace, especially the peace that surpasses all this understanding, that we have faith that God can bring into this world comes and comes swiftly. Um, and we also pray for the hospital that was bombed. Uh, last I saw, it was uncertain exactly what happened and how it exploded. Uh, I will say, and there may be other updates, so excuse me for not knowing the newest news. I will say that we pray for all those who are affected by that, who are caught in the middle of this violent war and who are suffering because of it. So we pray for peace and healing throughout this, this world, and especially in Israel and Palestine. Those are the prayers I have to lift up this morning. Are there prayers you would like to share this morning? If there are no other prayers to be shared, I'd like to reach out to those who are watching online. If you have any prayers you'd like to be shared during our worship time. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hold you and your joys and concerns in prayer. Please share those with us online, and we'd be happy to share them in a future service. Let us go to God in a moment of silence as we lift up these prayers and the prayers in our hearts. Dear God, the one who is love, the one who made today, made the sunrise, the one who calls us to recognize that every breath, every life, every new day is a blessing and a gift. You call us to rejoice in that. We have gathered with all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our body, and all of our strength to celebrate that. And God, you know you have heard our cries because it was not easy to get here today. Because we know of our own struggles and our own burdens, 
We know of the burdens of the person sitting next to us. We know of the burdens and the cries of those down the street from us who yearn for shelter and for peace, for those halfway across the world who suffer in the midst of violence and chaos and terror. God, in this broken world, we pray that your Holy Spirit, as it has broken in time and time again, once again, comes down upon us and all your people and all your creation to bring forth the peace that only you can bring forth, to bring forth the love that only comes from you, that brings forth new life. We pray, God, this day that we are able to discern your way, that we have the courage and the wisdom to respond, and that we may be able to join together with all creation, all your people, in singing your wonder. We begin joining me together, singing the words Christ taught us. ourselves in prayer, we now transition into our time of offering, and we are transitioning, so thank you for your grace in this. Uh, we have started passing our offering plate. What I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask Ann, our usher, to bring the plates forward, and what we'll do is she's just going to walk down the center aisle, and she's just going to hand each person as she can in, uh, a plate, and if you'll, well, it looks like other ushers are getting up to help her. So you can either pass it amongst yourselves, or you can pass it to an usher at the end of your aisle, however you see best. Uh, yeah, if you'll just wait right there for a second. <clears throat> all of our offerings, all the gifts we celebrate today, we celebrate all gifts. We celebrate the abundance of God's love poured out into our lives and into your lives, and the ability to share that love with all God's creation in wonderful and life-giving ways. All gifts, the time, the talent, and your financial gifts all go to empower us to be a safe space and a sanctuary for everyone, everyone, everyone to know and celebrate God's love and to empower us to go out into the world to serve and to love as Christ served and loved. If you're online, you can go to our website, orvalleyucc.org. You can find the My Offering button, and you'll be a few clicks away from donating. Please join me in our invitation to the offering printed in your bulletin. Psalm 63 exhorts us to declare God's glory among the nations, God's marvelous works among all the peoples. Let us glorify God through generous living and faithful use of the resources entrusted to our care. Let us marvel at the Creator's provision by affirming that we have more than enough to share for the benefit and care of our community, world, and God's church. And just a quick note, as the plate goes around, even if you don't have something physical to place into the plate, 
I invite you to touch the plate and prayerfully lift up whatever love God has poured into your life and how you share that with others. Let us go to God in a moment of prayer.
because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin you use for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. And he asked them, whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left and went away. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you please pray? Dear God, the one whose world and whose call is our only path to life. God, we pray that on this day and in this moment, your word will refresh our souls and renew our call and our purpose in you. I pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to you, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Today we have a story that really is pretty consistent throughout scripture. This deep, dark conflict and contrast between the world that we as human beings construct and God's world, and God's way. This is this first time, the first time this conflict appears is really in the story of the Exodus, what Walter Brueggemann calls the most important story of all scripture. And the story of the Exodus is really centered on the conflict between Pharaoh and God. Here though, we have a little bit of an updated version of the conflict and a much more simplified version. This time, it's a little bit more tangible. It's not so us versus them, we need to be liberated from Pharaoh, but much more a complex reality of there is a Caesar's world we live in. You would have to pay taxes to. I mean, much more relatable to be like, wait, we really have to pay taxes? In God's world, in God's way. How do we live into that? How do we hold those in tension and conflict? I recently found a really empowering story about this from an anthropologist named Anna Corum. Uh, Anna points out that she is Jewish and is working on anthropology and especially human aging. And especially in the culture of successful aging. And she describes successful aging as this idea of like defeating death, deterioration, and avoiding all physical, mental, any sort of anguish in the later years. She calls out that that's really impossible and we're setting ourselves up for failure in this industry that constantly pushes on to us different ways to be successful in aging. So she takes a look at a group of nuns Christian women who have committed their lives to trying to follow the way of God while living in the world of Caesar. And the reason she picked this group is because she noticed, observing, that they had achieved the goals of successful aging. They had found fulfillment. They had found joy in later life. And yet, simultaneously, ironically, they had rejected all of the tenets that are normally prescribed as successful aging. She tells one really powerful story that I think actually hits home to what it means to be Christian and what it means to serve and what it really means to live in that contrast between the human constructed world, that world of Caesar, and the way of God. <coughs> She tells the story of being invited to go on visits with Sister Irma. Sister Irma felt called as part of her ministry 
that she would travel the infirmary wing of the convent, where nuns who had reached a certain medical need had, were now living and residing. She'd go room to room visiting these sisters and to offer simple blessings, maybe a brief conversation. She comes in to the room of Sister Helen, who, if you will, according to Caesar, has no ability to communicate, has no ability to articulate speech in its normal contrast of, for us, English, but any sort of accepted language, what Anna Corwin calls dynamic communication. And Sister Irma, excuse me, Sister Irma goes up to Sister Ellen and begins to interact with her, and she offers a blessing to Sister Helen. Sister Helen communicates in a series of ums and ahs to respond. And so Sister Irma carries out her blessing upon Sister Helen. And the first sort of catch, the first sort of challenge, if you will, to Caesar's world, comes when Sister Irma invites Sister Helen to bless her. And so Sister Helen, in a series of what to me are non, I can't understand language and sounds, proceeds to bless Sister Irma with ums and ahs. And it goes on just, you know, from my perspective and from Corwin's perspective, with no sort of sensical ending or rhythm. Finally, though, the two sisters conclude Sister Helen says one final awe, and then Sister Helen responds, Amen. Then it gets even more strange and powerful. Sister Irma asks Sister Helen if she would bless Anna Corwin. Anna's a little thrown off, but receives the gift. And she goes in to receive this blessing. And Sister Helen proceeds with, again, her series of ums and ahs. At a certain point in the rhythm of ums and ahs, Dr. Corrin chimes in. Thank you, sister. Amen. Sister Irma corrects Dr. Corwin and says, the blessing is not done. <laughs> and so Sister Helen continues her ums and ahs until the conclusion of the blessing is reached and says amen. Sister Irma says amen, and Anna Corrin says thank you, amen. It makes sense where Anna Corrin was coming from because it was not understandable what Sister Helen was doing because we're all so, we live in Caesar's world. We are constructed by Caesar's contract. We believe in language. We believe in power dynamics. We believe, and especially in our culture, we believe that the strength and courage and the, the ability to work, the ability to be blessed, are, lie with youth. We believe that they're professionalized, that only those who really know what they're doing can, care, can provide care. We go as far as to believe that only blessings can be done by those who have been trained to give blessings. We believe in these constructs. I mean, I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody. I believe in these constructs. I'm a very rigid person, so trust me. And yet, that's not God's way. Because what God's way is that care and blessing and life itself is not rooted in ability. It's rooted in human existence. It's rooted in the value that if you are breathing and living, you are equal. That you can equally give as well as receive. And so especially in our own challenges, in this season in which we, we take a moment to give thanks, in this season when we reflect on the end of the year, and we reflect on what sort of new year, new life will we live? We can ask ourselves questions about, oh, my ability. 
And that's a good question to ask. You should be asking yourself questions about what are your limitations. However, let us ask our questions of limitations based on the constructs of God's way and not on Caesar's, and to learn to discern the difference. That's what Jesus is calling out in this passage. There's a lot of irony in this passage. Jesus actually forces those who are trying to trap him into their own problematic potential idolatry because they're in the temple and they're holding up the picture of Caesar, the counter-emperor, the counter deity. They are the ones committing idolatry, trying to trap him in his own idolatry. He is calling for them to discern on their own the difference between God's way and the way of the constructs we have made, the finite boundaries we have set. I think prayer is a great example. The number of times I walk into a meeting and people expect me to be the only person who can pray. If Sister Helen can pray, and then I want to clarify something too. Nuns aren't ordained, I think, Somebody else might be better to explain their role in Catholicism. I will say this. They, they really, at the end of the day, are lay people who have taken vows to God and community. But uh, if you stood up in front of the church, if you stood up in front of any church, if you've been baptized, you have made a promise to God, or somebody made a promise to God on your behalf, and to God's community. If you have committed those vows, you are capable of praying. We have to discern God's way forward. What is it I can really do? What is God calling me to do? Maybe I can't do it that way or that way or that way, but I can do it the way God calls me to do. Sister Helen didn't need English to, to pray. Sister Helen really didn't need any traditional human language to bless another human being. She didn't even need the construct that we all put up. I mean, the number of Christians I would have known who would have been like, excuse me, Dr. Corman, are you Christian? There was no question of that. All Sister Helen saw was another child of God and blessed her. And it took Anna Corman stripping away, having her, her, her imprisonment to Caesar's world be destroyed in order to receive that. To recognize the egalitarian reality of caregiving. That caregiving, that volunteering, that service is as much about empowering others to give us gifts as much as it is about us giving and serving others. That is what Jesus calls us into the sermon today. To discern the ways of God and to better understand those constructs we've built around them. Because, you know what, unfortunately, yes, you have to pay your taxes. Yes, we function a little bit better when we Yes, computers are wonderful devices and they'll build communities. At the same time, we also recognize that those are human finite realities and that there's always something greater calling us, moving us, and leading us to serve, to, and to love as Christ served.
Dear loved ones, I hope you're able to join us at Fellowship Hall. And may the truth gentle your heart. May truth find itself in your speech. May truth guide your actions and attitude. May truth release you to be fully you. May truth compel you to greater love and compassion. May truth fortify you as you go into the world as God's agent of healing and hope. Live in truth. Go in peace. Be loved. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.